Emma Kale writes, Does anyone have any ideas for using fabric scraps on layouts? My mum is a quilter, and I asked her to save any of the scraps for me rather than throw them out. It's only been a few months, and I have a bag full, but I'm struggling to use them. Glittergirl, can you help Emma Kale fancy up her fashionable fabrics? Of course I can. Actually, many of the techniques we use with paper emulate the look of fabric. Things like bunting banners where we cut all those little triangles out of paper are really meant to look like what would originally have been made with fabric and hung outside or in a room. So there are lots of looks like that that we can use with actual fabric and just layer it in. In fact, one of the things I love to do with fabric is to not sew it at all. So today I think I will be able to make it all the way through my project without even needing to add any stitching. Though of course that's a beautiful look should you want to spend a little more time adding that detail. So I have this scrap of Japanese fabric that has a little schoolyard scene and some French wording at the bottom and I think I'm mostly going to use this top piece which has uh, the sky and little squiggly clouds and some birds. So that's what I'm going to use and then I have all my paper goodies that I've pulled out. So I don't know about you but I love Valentine collections and I love picking out my favorite Valentine papers and having that stash of Valentine Day goodies to scrap with except I'm never going to make 10 layouts for one single Valentine's Day. So I always end up with this surplus of Valentine's Day stuff. And I like to think of different ways that I can stretch that to make it work for other themes. And almost every Valentine collection, it's easy to make it work for something else. So today I'm going to be using the new Valentine collection from Crate Paper, which is called 14. And I've just picked out a few different papers that can work with other themes that are kind of related, but not technically the 14. Of February. This one has an XO print all over um, the gray and it's lovely distressed and just a bit of red at the side. And on the other side has all these different boxes that you can cut out that say either 14 or February. And the thing is that once you cut these apart and separate them, it doesn't have to be the 14th of February. It could be somebody's 14th birthday, it could be the 14th of any month, it could be a 14th anniversary. Any way that 14 was significant in some way, all those little boxes could come in handy. But definitely anything that you don't use on the cut apart side, you can certainly use this really versatile gray print. Then this one is a really striking background with the doily design inside heart shapes. And I think if you use this as your 12 by 12, it could make for a really beautiful page. But I actually was drawn to the idea of cutting the hearts apart and using them on a separate background so that I didn't have quite so many, so that I could have a few that would still really catch your eye, but not so much that they took the focus away from my photos. And what I really love about this collection from Crate Paper is that they've mixed maps in with the hearts. So the B side of this is a world map, and I'm not, I don't think that I'll be using, well, I might use a little bit. Yeah, I might use a tiny little bit because the right part of the world for the photos um, is there on the map. So I might um, use that after all. But I'll show you where I really like how they've combined the two, the idea of the, the map prints and the hearts. So this is the cut apart sheet that has um, several different sizes. Some are small, some are square, but quite a few will fit the uh, Project Life pockets. They're three by four. And there are a few that actually say Valentine, but quite a few that just either have the right color or love, and so it's just those two pieces that specifically say Valentine. The other side is a really nice, versatile white and red grid pattern with some distressing, and then the tiny little dots where the lines intersect, they're actually little bitty hearts. And then the borders and tags. And here you can see, not only do I have a map border and a map tag, there's this row here of hearts where some of the hearts are filled with maps. And there's actually a 12 by 12 that has that same idea of hearts in all different map prints. So I really like that and it's what drew me to the collection was this idea of mixing heart motifs and the rich colors with all those different vintage maps. The back of that sheet is a gradient yellow chevron. And then there's this page, which is what I'm going to use for my background, and it's not from a Valentine's Day collection. It's actually from Crate Paper's Christmas collection called Sleigh Ride. And the other side has this lovely vintage uh, winter theme, uh, winter scene, 
but I'm going to use the B side which has a gray and white large chevron print and I'm going to use it on its side so that it points into the middle because what I'm going to do is a two page layout where one page is a 12 by 12 and the facing page is a divided page protector. These are in the store now in all sorts of different um, combinations and there are actually several different brands. This one's by American Crafts and has the four four by six pockets plus four three by four pockets across the middle. But they're also different combinations and have a look, there's um, American Crafts, there's We Are Memory Keepers and there are also um, page protectors from Echo Park in their Photo Freedom line. And then smaller format from Snap, there's some different ones from Doodlebug, all sorts of different divided page protectors. So anything you're looking for, um, it may be there already. Just have a little look. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, 12 by 12 here with the arrows facing in so that then I have all these different pockets and they're going to coordinate to match here. I also wanted to pull in just a little bit more that wasn't from the 14 collection and what I wanted to do was to add in some more of that turquoise that shows up in those map details but isn't in the pattern papers that I selected. So I know this is a little bit of a, a strange choice in a way. I went to my pebbles papers and you wouldn't really think to mix pebbles which is always very clean and has no distressed edges with crate which is almost always distressed around the edges but the color this turquoise pebbles does great turquoises in almost every collection lately and I really liked the color together and I thought the the ledger print once it's cut down into some smaller pieces and add a little ink around the edges and it will all mix and match perfectly. So that's my plan with the paper and of course that then brings in the turquoise of the fabric piece as well. And then I've just pulled out a couple other little things. Alphabet in turquoise, that's Jilly Bean Alpha Beans uh, alphabet and a red glittery set of thickers that match the 14 collection. And then these, which are also from 14, they're little um, paper layered banners that have then been, been stitched over the top and they have little uh, love sayings on them. So that's where I'm going to start and then I have a stack of 4x6 photos and what I'm going to do is not Valentine's Day but I'm going to take that idea of mixing the love, uh, the heart motifs and the maps and I'm going to scrap some honeymoon photos. So I'm going to get started and let's see if we can use some fabric scraps on today's page. I want to use some mists and stamping on this page and I don't want the mist and ink to get on top of my photos. So I'm going to be using this little trick. I have my two 4x6 photos that I'm going to use on the 12x12 and all my other photos are going to go into the pocketed page protector. And I've just gone ahead and matted the two 4x6 photos on the gray EXO paper, but I haven't attached it to anything beyond that. And then I've cut the next layer of paper so that it's a slightly larger mat. And once I have this mat, I can take the photos, put them aside, and do all my background work knowing that this is the space that's going to be filled with the photographs. And then I'm going to use two colors of mist. I'm using a turquoise blue glimmer mist and then a red Mr. Huey. And red mists I think are a little different to use because if you use them in the big droplets or spray, sometimes well, maybe it's just me. I fear it looks a little bit too much like a crime scene, and so I would prefer it to be more like paint and less like a spray on mist, even though I love the splatter look in all different colors. So I'm going to do my splatters with the turquoise, and then I'm going to paint with the red mist so that it's just two little different looks to add something to the background. And I also have my fabric to include in here as well. So I want to go ahead and start with the fabric so that I make sure I have enough from this scrap to go around. And I'm just going to cut another layer to go behind this piece of paper. And then I'm going to do what we tend to do when we have a, a paper that we want to get more from. I'm going to cut the middle out so that I can use that again. And I really like when I'm using just small pieces to have the frayed edges so that you get the texture. And I don't, um, unless it's 
wrinkled into a ball if it's just kind of nice little creases like this one. I don't even tend to iron it because I like the dimension that it gives. Now if I were putting this whole piece on here and you were going to see it all, then ironing would probably be a very good idea. But in this case, let's see if either of these will tear. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But in this case, I like um, the texture that it will give behind the paper. So this one isn't going to just fray easily. So I'm going to use my scissors to cut this, but then I'm going to come back to the edges and fray them after I've cut it. That's easy enough. So to cut out the middle, I'm just going to fold this in half, snip out the center so that I have a frame that's left, and then I'll be able to use this scrap a bit more. Now, it depends on your stash of, of fabric. In this case, this is all I have of this particular print, and I want to get the most that I can from that design. So to fray it, I just go back and pull the edges and the different threads will come loose. I'll do that all the way around the edge and then I think I'll use that as the, the very bottom layer and I'll start misting and stamping with that attached. My normal adhesive roller to attach the box and you can use quite a few different um, paper glues. They'll still attach fabric to paper without any trouble, especially a lightweight fabric like this. But um, just keep in mind that the heavier the glue you use, the more it will show through, especially with a thin fabric. So you can use double-sided tape if you really want to make sure that the fabric doesn't move, it will definitely hold. But you will sometimes get a line that you can see where the tape um, exists there. So it just depends on what you want to use. A lighter adhesive won't show through as much. And then um, you can if you want to be able to move and manipulate the little threads around the edge, you can use a little bit of a roller adhesive just by pressing it on. Or you can use spray adhesive, or you may prefer a really tidy look where everything has um, those, those threads completely taken off. So it's just up to you what look you like. And I quite like to just have the threads bundled up together so that it gives a bit of texture. And sometimes once the fabric is glued down, I'll still pull more threads out of the edges and just bundle them up to kind of their origin spot. You end up with cute little curls and things like that. Gives it a bit more texture. So I'm ready to start adding my mist. I'm gonna go ahead and put the next paper layer over the top because I want the ink to overlap some of these pieces. So here the fabric now gives me that nice texture in the background and I've got a kind of tone and tone there with the turquoise. And I'm going to start with my turquoise mist and I'm going to do some drops in this corner and this corner. And I use the, the tube of the mister to do the small drops. And then I'll come back in with my eyedropper to do bigger ones. And then I'll just use a Mr. Huey eyedropper to do a few larger droplets. Now I can work with the red. I'm going to be using a paintbrush. And I just want to say straight away, don't feel like you have to be somebody who can paint in order to give this a try. If you've never done it before, you might want to try on another piece of paper, but um, it, I promise it's easy. I am not someone who can paint a picture with a paintbrush, so I promise you don't have to do that. Okay. The idea is to just take a tiny little bit of the paint on the brush and then I'm just going to come in and paint tiny little hearts. I'm using a really small brush
And what I tend to do is do heart outlines, and then the ones that stay really nice as an outline, I leave that way. The ones that look a little bit more wonky, I fill them in. Also, if you want to have a, another look at ideas for painting and applying mist in a different way, have a look at the video that Corey Jones added, I think, last week. And it might have been the week before. But it has great ideas for big hearts on the page and other shapes like that. While I have my red mist and paintbrush out, I'm also going to add in a little word stamp to these uh, little areas of ink droplets. And I'm just using a small little word stamp that says love. It's from a set that I've used plenty of times over the last year. It's from the Follow Your Heart collection by My Mind's Eye. And I'm just going to paint the mist onto the stamp and use it like normal and it just has a slightly different look than using ink or acrylic paint and um, so just another little bit of variety that you can add in it's a little bit easier to clean from the stamp than acrylic paint so if you like the look of something that's a bit less perfect than a fine ink pad but um, but not quite as messy. I've just stamped that one and realized it will probably get covered up, but we'll see how it go. I think that's probably enough. So just a little bit of, um, of the red Mr. Huey, but without having big droplets or, or splatters, just a, a little different look to bring that color across the page. And I'll probably repeat some of that when I get to the pockets of the... Uh, facing page as well. Now I can bring in my photos and I want to, yeah that bottom corner is probably going to get covered up. It's okay. And I want to um, bring in my that heart doily paper. So I'm going to choose a few of these and cut them out and then get everything stuck together. Now I can add my photos and I've cut a few of the hearts. So I'm just going to balance. I've chosen kind of the largest heart that I've cut and the smallest. And then I have two more that I've cut that I can put on the facing page. And I'm just looking for where I can place everything so that I'm not covering up anything vital in the photos. But so that I'll still have a nice line to flow visually across the two pages. So I want one higher, one lower, and then I can bring up the and the heart on the facing page will be up more in line with this so that it has a little bit of a triangle or zigzag effect. And I don't want to cover up this little bit of stamping up here. So I'll just move this down ever so slightly. Put those on a little bit of an angle. And I'll use some pop dots with the corners of the hearts to give them a bit more dimension on the page. And then from the map print on the other side, I was able to salvage just a tiny little part of the map that, um, that shows Japan where the photos were taken. So I should be able to tuck that in. Where to go? Here it is. So I have this tiny little bit of Japan, and so I could tuck this into the paper layers here on the side. Since that was the back of the doily print, it seems silly not to use it. It needs a little more shading. I'll show as much of it as I can muster there. Okay, and I'll put a pop dot under this corner. Okay, that's given me um, 
some direction in where things should go now because this is a good place for me to add a title but it will need to be the contrasting color because I don't think my red letters will show up very well on top of the red pattern print but the turquoise should be pretty legible on top of there and this gives me some writing space but I know that since I have the facing page I can use some of those pockets for writing as well and I also want to make sure that I'm keeping the other page in mind when I'm working on this one so that they end up working well together. So at this point I'm going to kind of pause on the 12 by 12 and set up my divided page protector so that I can make sure that anything I'm going to include there I have something that will work on this side as well. At this point, working with the two pages side by side makes it a little bit easier to figure out the placement of everything and make sure that whatever I use on one side, I'm using on the other to pull the two designs together. I decided I would stick with two of the journaling cards from the 14 cut apart sheet. And one is, an actually, is actually a Valentine's Day card and I've just used the B side so that I have some graph paper that I can write on. And then cut a turquoise um, ledger paper from that same paper that is behind the photos and then just use the fabric scrap to cut that to a 3 by 4 and put it in a pocket all on its own that will just be embellishment. I've added another heart here so that gives me that kind of uh, zigzag or triangle composition that I wanted to be able to follow the hearts from one side of the layout to the other. And I have the four photos just placed here at the moment, but I think I will add a little bit of something here and there to some of them so that I have just a little bit, uh, a little bit more embellishment there. Now, this then made me realize what I was missing over here. I wanted to use this journaling box with the map and then the XOXO because I'd picked up on the XOXO here, but I haven't used any of the colored map. So I went to the border sheet and cut two different borders from that. One is just the colored map and the other was that um, the hearts that are all cut out and have the some of them have a map print inside and some have a ledger. So I'm going to take those strips and add them into the 12 by 12 side so I can just include more of the same patterns that are over here on this side too. This also gives me a good place to cover up anything that might have gone slightly imperfect in case you've got a little misted heart that didn't go quite right or one of the ink drops bled too much or anything that just didn't come out completely perfect. Now this map I used the right way up because I want to draw attention to the fact that it's the right place on the map. This colored map is not the right place so I've cut it to quite um, a narrow strip and cut out um, the ends where you could start to tell what country things were and I'm going to place it upside down so that it's not so obvious what all the locations are. I'd rather it just look like a general idea of a map rather than a map of an actual place. Although it is, it does appear to be a real map. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of that pattern brought over to here. And it also, ha I have some hearts that I can add in to this side. Because I've got them at the top over here, I'd like for them to go toward the bottom of the page here. So maybe I will just cut up to the map heart here. And I'll ink these edges. And place this right at the bottom so I can just attach it right on top of the photo. Now I know that embellishment on top of the photo is not everyone's style. If it's not yours, please don't worry. Please don't think that I'm telling you you have to do that. And But I know that I have a lot of really similar photos that I took on this trip. So I have lots of different angles of this. And I know I've done pages where you can see the whole image. So I don't mind having a little bit of embellishment here and there because I know that I'm, I haven't destroyed anything. I, I, I do have it in my album um, and you'll, you'll be able to see it. So I wanted, the idea here is to get an idea of all the different things that were very typical for what we saw when we were there. Okay, now I would like to get my title in and get my journaling done, and then I'll come back to add finishing touches. Okay, lots of lettering on this one, but I think I'm nearly done at this point. 
I've added the title on top of the big heart and decided I couldn't spell it all with just the turquoise letters, partially because I was out of some of the necessary letters, but also partially because I wanted a little bit more variety. So in order for the red, or it's kind of a pinkish red, letters to show up on the heart, I just cut another border strip that would add some contrast. But then I wanted to make sure that I used that same border strip on the facing page. So I used a little piece of it along with those same letters on one of the journaling cards. And I just um, used that same technique of the ink splatters and then I stamped the little love uh, word with the red mist. And I'm just going to leave that one as plain as it is and pop that into the furthest pocket. And then I've added journaling to two journaling cards in the same pocketed page protector. So, um, and they, it worked well that, that it spread over two cards because they kind of say two different things. This title seems a little bit round, random perhaps, um, but it's actually a song that we kept singing when we were in Japan. It's, you can look it up if you want. It's a funny little song by a band called the Trachtenberg Family Slideshow Players, and they have a whole song about taking a trip to the mountains in Japan. And it's just really catchy, and we'd heard it before we left, and then it just was there in our mind, and we sang it all the time. So little things like that are something that I really, really like to include in my albums. So I used it as the title and then used one of the journaling cards to write about that little connection and how we sang that song all the time. And then the other one, the other journaling card is more about the scenery photos that I included here. And one thing you may notice, it's a honeymoon layout, but there are no photos of us together. Don't make the same mistake that I did and forget that you're a scrapbooker when you're on your honeymoon and see if you can get a picture that you're both in. We have one and it's very blurry. It was taken by a waitress and it you can't even tell where we are or who we are really and everything else is just individual pictures we hadn't really thought of self timers or anything like that so um, learn from my mistake and go go ahead and, and make sure you get photos where you're actually together one way or another so I want to add a few little finishing touches I had those little border um, pieces from crepe paper and I'm going to use two of those but this one is a little bit too bright white to go against all those distressed papers so I'm just adding a little ink to that and then I think this will just come up here in all these layers here then I want to include one on this little fabric embellishment piece on the other side and this is just going to be the heart and the fabric and I want to fray this a little bit more so that you can see all the threads in the pocket and then I'll add that little vellum phrase over the top there we go and I, I think that the only problem with using the only challenge really of using the fabric strip or fabric scraps in a pocketed page protector is then what goes on the other side and I think there are a few different options one you could just cut another piece of the same fabric and and have it back to back or another fabric so you could just have it fabric on both sides and then it'll look fine you could cut a paper piece to go on the other side and what I would do is just keep it a little bit smaller than the normal pocket size make it smaller than the fabric so that then you'll still be able to keep that texture around the edges or um, you can just actually use the back of the fabric if you depending on what you choose you may be able to add uh, more embellishment on the back something similar to this where you're just adding a little bit of a shape on top and your fabric may look quite nice from the back it just depends on what you've chosen what scraps you have available but uh, don't be afraid to try it now what I was realizing here is that the the solid uh, versions have adhesive and then on my vellum one the adhesive stuck to the backing sheet. So I'm just going to see if I can peel it off or if it's a well, yeah I can. So I can use these little glue dot type adhesives. To layer those two pieces in. Now let's see if that's actually going to fit because that 
little border is ever so slightly too big. So I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit to make it fit, but I still want to keep that same design to the edges. So I'll see if I can just just make it a tiny bit smaller. Yep, that'll fit inside. And I could add more to this, but I actually quite like it really nice and simple, and I like that you can see more of the fabric that way. So I'll go ahead and add this into a pocket, and then I want to use fabric one more time before the whole page is complete. And I think the best place at this point would be to do another little bit of something that will embellish a photo. So if I pick the photo that's on the diagonal from the one where I already added, this would be a good place to use a little bit of something. So I'm going to take my fabric scrap again and just do a little strip at the top and then gather it a tiny little bit. So just get that edge so that it's raw enough to create some fray. And I can pull these edges to get the threads going. And in fact, I may want this to be slightly smaller. Yeah. And then to get the texture, I'm just going to run my adhesive on the back, but then Grease it a little bit. So just pinch the fabric together here and there. And you can do this, like you can you could do pleats and make a long strip into something really nice and orderly, or you can just do something that's slightly more haphazard like this. You can also do this on top of the page protector if you prefer the embellishment to be there rather than on top or attached to the photo. And then I can pull these threads down over the top and loop them around. And then maybe take one more of my little banner pieces that I've used elsewhere. Add the ink to make it match everything else and run that over the top here. And I just get that nice texture from all the thread and everything. But of course, if you don't like the messy look, you can do nice and orderly and tidy. I love that um, fabric and paper craft both allow us to do a range of styles that way. And I think at this point, I will call this one all done. So your challenge for this week is to include some fabric in your layout in one way or another. And then remember, we really, really would love for you to share what you did or why in the box below your um, layout. So when you're describing the page, tell us maybe where your fabric came from or why you chose to include it, or maybe what technique you love to use with fabric. And many of you may want to sew your fabric or you may make a fabric banner with little bunting flags or anything like that. Um, but use some fabric in any way that you like and share it with us in the gallery. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.